Proverbs seventeen nineteen. He that loveth transgression, or let me back up, I said that wrong. He loveth transgression that loveth strife. And he that exalteth his gate seeketh destruction. Now, whether or not you've identified it as such, you probably, all of us, know someone that loves strife. Um, if it's predominant enough in their lives, you will, you will recognize it. And I suspect everybody knows somebody like this. There are varying degrees of it. But people that thrive on drama and uh, turmoil and unrest, they're not happy unless it's something, something going on like that in their lives. Isaiah 57, 20 says, The wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. And that's the nature of every sinner. And the truth of that verse manifests itself in different ways, casting up mire and dirt, but one of them is this love of discord and trouble. Um, it's something that is noticeable in young people as well as old. And I don't remember the specific time, but I sort of remember the first time it dawned on me that somebody actually enjoyed turmoil, <laughs> the opposite of peace and contentment. And I know it sounds self-righteous to say it, but it was a little bit shocking to me that somebody actually, you could just see that they thrived on it. And I'm not saying I didn't have it in me as well, because we all do. But it's a lot easier for us to see it in somebody else than it is to see it in ourselves. And just to be honest about it and, and thankful, the Lord has to a great extent spared me from that. I don't like drama. I don't like unrest. And, and I'm thankful for that. In natural things, some people are spared that more than others. It's every sinner's nature to be discontent and contentious. This word strife. But as with most outward sinful attributes, some people are prone to this outwardly more than others in an obvious way. Some people are characterized this way. They're known for it. And others are better at hiding it. And still others are just temperamentally not prone to it. And I've known all kinds, and I'm sure you have too, but consider what this is at its core. Discontent, unless there's some kind of strife, unless there's some kind of turmoil. And, and I think you'll see this not only in the right division of the Scripture, but, but in your experience, that people who love strife are just bored with the lack of it. They're just bored with normal things. Just, just ordinary things with which most people are generally occupied, carrying on your everyday life, you know, just going to work and, you know, putting in an honest day's work for an honest day's pay and, uh, you know, buying groceries and whatever it is you do during your, your day. Most people, I would say, are just bored with that. It's just not enough for them. And... Um, some to the point of absolute rebellion against it. They just won't do it. And this is a plague upon humanity now. It's a terrible plague. And most people, I don't think, recognize this. It's very easy to, to miss it, to overlook this. But the source of incalculable evil in this world is just simply boredom. And you think about that. Call it discontent call it sin and you'd be right but this brand of evil we know more commonly simply as just boredom 
as young kids, this came naturally to us, didn't it? Just getting bored with the usual thing and looking for some way to get in trouble. <laughs> I was relatively, I lived a very sheltered life, I would say, relatively speaking. But we all, why did we get into trouble? Why? Because we just got tired of not getting into trouble. Just bored with it. We enjoyed a lot of wholesome things. I enjoyed playing sandlot football or we'd get together a basketball game or just going down when we were real little, we'd just go down to the, the big ditch, you know, and look for frogs and snakes and stuff. And that was perfectly, we were perfectly happy with that. Crawfish, we'd put, we'd tie a piece of bacon on a string and feed it down a crawfish hole. Have you ever done that? If you had never been crawdad fishing, you hadn't lived. But it wasn't always enough. Wrapping houses, I was pretty proficient at that. And some people didn't really care. I mean, you know, it was just a, it was just a joke and it was fun. And you know, a lot, some people knew we were doing it and didn't didn't say anything about it. Other people didn't appreciate it quite as much. And we'd get in trouble if we got caught, which wasn't often ringing people's doorbells and running off. You know, some people call it ding-dong ditching. I, we didn't call it that. I don't remember what we call that when I was little. But we've all done it, pretty much. Boys have done it. <laughs> I don't know about girls. But, um, and then it would just get worse from there. And I won't go too deep into it, but I... I actually may or may not have, have started my own black market fireworks racket. I would stock up on, on firecrackers. I'd buy like a, what they call a brick of firecrackers during the 4th of July. And when everybody else had popped all of their stuff and set off all their stuff, I still had a huge supply. So I would sell it at a premium to the neighborhood kids and they'd get in trouble. And I always figured it would come back to me somehow, but it never did. And then we'll probably just stop right there because it gets a lot worse from there. And I was very sheltered as a, as a kid. I, we lived in a, a great neighborhood. And, um, but it's just, it, it's just all of our, it's our nature to be bored with just being good. <laughs> Wholesome, honest, straightforward living is still boring to most people as adults. And many will get into trouble because of it. And here's a phrase, I believe, that will help us understand what this is, the love of strife. Two words, not enough. Not enough. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 30. Love of trouble. <coughs> Proverbs 30 and verse 15, I believe it is. 30, 15, the horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things, say not, it is enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth, that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. Our nature is like that fire. It's never enough. We're always consuming. The eye, look at verse 17. It's interesting in the context of, of verse 16. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. You, can't, you just can't stand just to do what's right. It just ain't enough, is it? <laughs> the ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. You see, it can be cute when you're three to do bad things. But it gets a lot less cute when you're 17, 20, 40. And it don't change. Our nature never changes. It just gets worse. The nature itself doesn't get any worse, but we get better at expressing it 
in in subtle ways, in way we get smarter at getting away with it. But it doesn't get less voracious. Never enough, 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 like the troubled sea always casting up mire. And understanding what this is is critical to understanding the spiritual lesson of our text. Because the spiritual teaching here is illustrated very well by this. Strife in spiritual things. Strife in your soul. Never resting in Christ. Like the troubled sea always casting up my rather than hearing the voice of the master say, peace be still. Strifes of words, strifes in the church can be identified by these same two words, not enough, not enough. People start arguing and finding fault, starting rumors and talking behind people's backs and meddling in everybody else's business when Christ is not enough, when the worship is not enough. People start seeking contentment in the world and they start consulting the wisdom of the world when Christ is not enough. And in natural things, you know, the Lord blesses some, and I believe he's blessed me with some, some things in, in the just being content. That's what it boils down to. Everybody has their primary business in life, whatever, whatever it is that supports your family and you make a living at. And then the rest of your time, you spend doing whatever it is you enjoy. You may enjoy your job. Most people don't. But you're going to seek that which you enjoy when you're not having to do what you have to do to make a living. And that can be various things. For me, I love to go fishing. I love gardening. I like woodworking. Those things keep me out of trouble by God's grace. And it really is that simple. God uses those things, but more important than the things, because it doesn't matter what it is for you. It doesn't matter what it is. God gives you the grace to be happy with those things, to be content doing that. Most people would probably be bored to death and not have any interest and not get real excited about growing a, a squash in their backyard. Most people I know wouldn't care for that or a cucumber. They wouldn't get excited over that. You may not have the patience to sit in a boat for five hours and catch three fish. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I would count that a, an outstanding day. And that's a day where I didn't offend a single person. <laughs> that's a day when I didn't hurt anybody. But in spiritual things, what God uses to keep us out of trouble is Christ being enough. His worship, the things of Christ. Christ is, by God's grace, enough. That's what keeps us from being part of the problem in the church of God. I don't want to argue with anybody. You know why? Because Christ is enough. I, I don't care to argue with it. I really don't. I hope that you can be content with Christ and I can be content with Christ and we can fellowship and worship together. If it's not that way, you're going to have to argue with somebody else because I, Christ is enough. I want to hear of him. I don't want to take stances on points. No interest in that. You ask me what my stance is on something, I'm just going to say, look, I just like to hear about the Lord. And Brother Jack used to say, <laughs> we'd come in on Wednesday, we'd be wore out on a Wednesday night, most of us tired and, and hard to concentrate sometimes on a Wednesday night. And the Lord, and, and the, but the Lord blessed Jack to to preach the gospel so simply and beautifully. But he would say, we would come in and he would say, you know, you came here tonight to hear me good, say good things about the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I was like, that's exactly why I came here tonight. And he said, I, I pray I'll be able to do that. Christ is enough. Don't want to argue with anybody. Not interested in other people's business. Um, it's just simply being happy with the simplicity of what God has arranged and ordained. God created his church from the very beginning since the time of the Passover. There's been a holy convocation, a, a public gathering of the people of God to worship him in Christ. And there still is. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. If that happens beyond my control, I'm sorry about that. And it has. Even when I'm not happy with somebody, I don't want to hurt their feelings because Christ is enough. I want that to be true for them. I don't want to give anybody a piece of my mind. You know, everybody says, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Well, even when, when somebody's wrong, I don't want to do that. I really don't. Now, when I say that, there are times when we do, don't we? But when I'm thinking right, I don't. I don't consult this world because Christ is enough. And Christ being enough is not a doctrine. You can't agree with things and Christ is enough for you. It's, it's a constant reality. It is the work of God in the heart. It is Christ in you. It's either true or it's not true. You can't learn it. It's a gift of God's grace. It involves learning. But you can't learn to be content except as God reveals Christ in you more and more and more. It's a person. It's knowing him. It's him being your heart's desire. It's like in natural things, when you gravitate to what you love to do, when you've got spare time, some of you don't even know what that is, spare time. Maybe we have a little bit of it, but whatever you gravitate to, it's like that in spiritual things. your treasure is that's where your heart is it's the simple teaching of our of our Lord believing on him you come and you hear of him you want to hear of him there's nothing you'd rather do you sing his praises you delight in the fellowship of his people and you try to be a blessing to his people in whatever way the Lord may gift you to do that. And in whatever way he honors you to be able to do that. And it's enough. That's the key. You remember what Jacob said to Esau? I have enough. When we can say that in the simple worship of God by the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ I have enough and we will have learned as Paul said in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content